as for my dream and vision, you know, by 2015, I would like to reach one million people through decentralized basic needs services. My decision depends on two factors. A, it has to be related to mountain in some way. And second, will my presence make any difference? Hi, my name is Tanzin and I'm from a place called Ladakh, which is in the state of Jammu and Kashmir in India. Uh, Ladakh is one of the coldest regions in the world and we have an extreme weather condition. In summer, temperature goes up to 35 to 37 degrees Celsius. In the winter, it's minus 40, 45 degrees Celsius was recorded. And we say that, you know, the weather is so extreme, climate is so harsh that either the best of the friends or the worst of the enemy only would like to visit us here. Culturally, we are quite close to Tibetan, but we consider ourselves not Tibetan, but Ladakhi. Uh, we have a very different dialect, we have a different food habit, we have a different history, but nonetheless we have a very close cultural and historical ties with Tibetans. It wasn't a sudden decision, but evolved over many years. And I think the whole interest started back in 95 during my school days. When I returned from Delhi for my summer vacation, I decided to work as a volunteer with an NGO here called International Society for Ecology and Culture. And after that, every summer during my college day summer, my school summer, subsequent summers, I work with the local NGOs in a different capacity, sometimes as a volunteer, sometimes in some small paid positions. So this all have influenced my decisions to work in the development sector. Later when I was studying in Delhi University, I would say I was really confused because on the one hand, I really wanted to become rich, wanted a lot of you know, luxury for myself like any other human being would do. While on the other hand, having had an exposure through my volunteer work with an NGO to the development sector and having come from a small village and to have an opportunity to study in a place like Delhi, I felt a sense of responsibility to do something back for my community. So I was looking for a career which would help me strike a balance between what I want as an individual and what life want me to be. So in that way, I thought a development sector is a sector which would you know, give me this opportunity. During my many years of exposure to development sector in Ladakh, one thing that I realized was if something is really lacking in development sector, that is a management skills in these development programs. Uh, before taking up IFP fellowship, I was working as deputy director or program coordinator with Ladakh Ecological Development Group for about two and a half years. The challenges and the difficulties that I face while I was working in Ladakh, I would say I would categorize them into three. At the professional level, a lack of understanding of an issues. How do you replicate the model? We as an NGO are successfully able to make a model, but the question is that how do you scale it up? So that was a really a big issue. I think it's not only an issue with me, but it's an issue of development sector in general. And the third biggest challenge was you know, related to an organization. You know, building a professional team was really difficult in the remote area because you don't get many trained and skilled profession to work in small villages. And your program success really depends on the quality of your team. So that was really a big challenge. I think combination of many factors have influenced my decision to apply for a Ford Foundation Fellowship. And the three crucial factors which went into my decision making was A, having studied economics and management all my life, I learned how to manage programs related to environment and poverty in an effective and efficient manner. But something that was really missing was a fundamental and academic understanding of issues I was working for, be it poverty, environment, climate change, and so on. And for a young professional like me, you know, this kind of understanding is absolutely important because 
we work not for the money, but we are very much passionate about the issues. The fact of viewers, I lack confidence in my dream and vision in the sense that sometimes I doubt maybe my confidence is blind in the sense that I don't have an, my academic exposures are limited to management and economics and my physical exposure to places are limited to small places like Ladakh, Uttaranchal and so on. So I wanted an international exposure and see for myself and where the world is heading. Am I thinking in the right directions? In order to reach to where I want to reach in life, I really wanted to build a force behind me. So, uh, you know, degree from a reputed international university plus Ford Foundation Fellowship title, I thought would be a big force behind me. So I thought, why not study? My experience of living in a foreign environment and an alien culture was great. You know, the moment you walked into a place like Oxford, you are walking into a zone which is 800 years past. And when you interact with the students, scholar, this is like you are in a zone which is 200 years ahead of you. So this is a huge crossroad between your past, present and future. And altogether in the one year, I had an opportunity to visit 12 countries and see many things. When it comes to culture, the something that I really missed in Europe was you know, personal touch. There in Europe, you have this notion of personal space which doesn't exist in my hometown. So in that way, I really miss that personal touch. I never doubt my abilities to complete IFP fellowship. The real question was always how difficult, uh, how challenging will it be? I think their IFP did an excellent job to prepare me to face these challenges with the less difficulties. In other words, you know, without IFP orientation training, I would not have completed my fellowship so successfully, so smoothly. As such, I did not face any difficulty at Oxford University to complete my master course, but I've studied uh, economics and commerce all my life, and now to switch to a master in science was quite a big challenge to begin with. However, the Oxford faculty, the education system, the classmates were so great that you know I had no problem not only to sail through, but I managed a distinction in one of the four component and near distinction in other two. I developed a lot of new skill at Oxford. A, I think I learned to be in critical. B, I developed in confidence in my vision. Second most important thing that Oxford did to me was it taught me a structure and a critical thinking. And this is now really helping me in my programs here in Ladakh in other parts of India, Pakistan, and Nepal. Now, once you are selected as a Ford Fellow, IP take care of every small detail you know, related to preparation of your dossier, enhancement of your skills, and any other support that you may require to complete your course successfully and smoothly. So Tashi Delek and Jule to IFP team, which means thank you very much in my language. After completing my course at Oxford, whether to come back to India was never a question with me. The question was always, you know, where in India I should work, you know, what issues I should focus on, because there are so many issues you can work on. And I think my decision depends on two factors. A, it has to be related to mountain in some way. And second, will my presence make any difference? If yes, and if it's mountain, then most that would be the place where I work. Getting back to India after completing my course was a great feeling. However, at the same time, I started missing my new friends at Oxford. You know, when I got back here, I did not face any difficulty except that I had to make a hard choice to be away from home for a while. My community and the extended family member wasn't expecting much from me because they do not know what Oxford stands for. And as for my close friends and some of the educated friends, you know, they knew me so well that they wasn't expecting in the sense that they knew that I would anyway continue my work in the mountain development. And so yeah, that way there wasn't much expectations. Yeah. At present, I work as an executive coordinator for an NGO called CDD, and I'm responsible for our administration and management of the program in India, Pakistan, and Nepal. And we broadly work in the five areas, decentralized energy, 
water supply, solid waste management, and wastewater treatment system. Before I have the fellowship, I was working for a two district in India. Now after completing the course with the help of IFP fellowship, I'm working in a three countries and many more districts. I think I would not have achieved this scale without an IFP. As for my dream and vision, you know, by 2015, I would like to reach 1 million people through decentralized basic needs services. And we already have a team of 18 organizations in India, Nepal, and Pakistan working on it. And secondly, in the long run, I would like to see that every poor in the Western Himalaya sleep in a warm house. So in that way, I really would like to work on climate change and space heating.